Previously, we have been discussing the bilateral Z-Trans form, which is mathematically expressed as X of Z summation minus infinity to infinity X of N Z minus N. So this transform that is the bilateral Z transform is for systems which are not dependent on auxiliary conditions or initial conditions. So therefore we move towards a system which are dependent on initial conditions. So we need a system which is dependent on initial conditions. And that system or transformation is by means of a unilateral Z transform, which is simply X of Z, the summation of X of N, Z minus N, where the summation now starts from zero to infinity. So the initial limit of summation is the difference between bilateral Z transform and unilateral Z transform whereby in bilateral we do not consider initial conditions we consider the system at initial rest whereas for unilateral we consider systems which have some sort of initial conditions these systems can be linear constant coefficient difference equations that have some sort of initial conditions now note that if we have a signal which is say x of n say which is a n u of n now because of this unit step function if you take the bilateral z transform or if you take the unilateral z transform both would be same because the summation here is already starting at zero while the summation over here now because of this unit step function would start from zero and go to infinity but in case we have x of n a n plus one u of n plus one so in this case the summation the running summation this would start from minus 1 and go to infinity whereas this would start from 0 and go to infinity so there would be a difference in this sort of signal so specifically say we have a power n u of n now the bilateral z transform or the unilateral z transform for both of them is actually same which is z over z minus a and this is greater than a or the absolute value of a now if we shift in time that is we have now a n plus 1 and u of n plus 1 so we can use the time shifting property uh, we would have x of z times z raised to power the amount of shift and over here we have a time advance so this is simply 1 or we can say we simply have z square over z minus a since we have added one more zero so this would remain the same and it is unchanged now for the unilateral case for the same function again a n u of n it has the same z transform which is z over z minus a but right now if we give a shift to this function that is we have a n u of n plus 1 then from the time shifting property of unilateral z transform so we would have z x of z minus z x of 0 now note that this I have used a small literal so this means that this is constant in time so this serves as our initial condition as well so in short we are dependent on auxiliary condition which is mentioned by z x of time instant 0 so solving this we would have simply z square over z minus a minus z x of 0 so the unilateral transform is different from the bilateral z transform for this signal so note that we have used one specific property of unilateral z transform 
but we have several other properties of the z transform so these properties are given by this table and they include linearity time delay time advance we have presently used the time advance property in this specific example to arrive at this solution so we have scaling in the z domain time expansion conjugation convolution and so on but note that most of these properties have very similar proofs and very similar applications as we have studied for the bilateral z transform however the marked difference is with respect to time delay and time advance so let us look into one specific uh, property that that is the time delay and we would try to prove this property next so this property says that if x of n has a z transform which is x of z then in that case x of n minus 1 this has a z transform which is z inverse x of z plus x of minus 1 now again this is auxiliary condition or an initial condition so in order to prove this let us denote this as y of n and we would take the z transform we would have y of z which is a summation from n 0 to infinity that is the formulation of unilateral z transform given by this expression so y of n say this is x of n minus 1 and z of minus n so next we will use a change in variable formulate this equality into a standard z transform expression so we use m as a variable which is simply equal to n minus 1 so in that case x would have an argument of m and the summation now this was so m is equal to n minus 1 so 0 minus 1 so m would start from minus 1 and it would go to infinity then for z power minus n from here we can say n is equal to m plus 1 so we would have minus m plus 1 so in the third equality z raised to power minus 1 is not a part of this summation so we can take it out so we would have z raised for minus 1 and then the summation is from m minus 1 to infinity x of m z minus m so in the fourth equality we can break this summation into two parts the first part is a summation which is starting from m equal to 0 to infinity we have x of m z minus m so we have covered the summation from 0 to infinity but the summation was starting from minus 1 so we are left with x of minus 1 and z of minus minus 1 so now multiplying z inside uh, this bracket so initially let's go to the second part first which is z inverse a summation m 0 to infinity x of m z minus m and then we have an x of minus 1 now this z would cancel with this z so we would simply have z power 0 or simply we can say this is x of minus 1 and z minus 1 but this is a standard form of unilateral z transform so we can express this as x of z so as this is our unilateral z transform which is appearing over here and this concludes the proof but do note that for repeated applications for example we can have an x of n minus 2 so its z transform like this case is simply z minus 2 x of z plus z minus 1 now small x that is in time of minus 1 plus x of minus 2 so now if the delay is of 2 unit then in z domain we would have 2 auxiliary conditions that we need to satisfy and successively if we are using delay so the initial conditions would increase
in the last part of this video we are going to reflect on how we can take the inverse z transform that is the unilateral z transform so given that we have an x of z which is 3 minus 5 by 6 z inverse over 1 minus 1 by 4 z inverse and 1 minus 1 by 3 z inverse now in order to take the inverse z transform a very important information that we need is the information regarding region of convergence that is roc so that was the case in bilateral z transform but note that the unilateral z transform only exists for the right sided signals that is the summation is starting from zero and going to infinity so it is moving in this direction in terms of time so if it is moving to the right then the roc will always be outward and you know that roc cannot contain any pole so the roc would be outward of the outermost pole so that is we can infer the roc from from this unilateral z transform I'm not going to solve this, but the steps would be pretty straightforward. We can convert this expression into x of z by z form, and then we can take partial friction expansion. Next, we would decide that ROC is outward, and then we would use a table of z transform pairs to evaluate x of n practice this and see if you can find the solution